Great. Thank you, Liz, and uh, hello to everybody. As I usually do with the uh, uh, first part of my session when I uh, introduce myself, I point out that I'm a, and no disrespect to Liz, but I'm a Canadian and not an American. I know Kiwis are quite going, a little nervous, but well, I'm not quite sure what he is, or you know, I don't want to say they're American because Canadians got offended. We don't, but I'll put your, your mind at ease. I thought what I'd do is just, I guess, give you a, a bit of insight insofar as how did I even start to think about organizational alignment? Because it's not really a topic that a lot of us thought about in our day. And when I was at the National Business Review, I had the opportunity to engage with a lot of uh, high, uh, high profile people, but also different businesses throughout the country. And one of the things that I really saw, you got the wonderful organizations such as AT, Chamber of Commerce, NZTE, Business New Zealand, and all, all these groups doing wonderful things in their own elements. But a lot of those things were actually, could overlap. And there were some opportunities to really tackle some big initiatives or big problems in New Zealand from a business perspective. So I thought, I kept thinking, how do we align them up to actually work collaboratively to make some great stuff happen? The hard part was you couldn't align them up. That was, that was the, the issue. So it was a bit of a quest of mine, but um, to no avail. But it really got me starting to think about, well, all my experiences in business, what, does, what did alignment look like? What worked, what didn't work? So I'm gonna ask you a question, you know, and uh, just take a second to think about, with regards to the value of a strategic initiative, uh, within an organization, how much of it do you actually think is achieved? 100%, 80%, 60%? You know, a lot of people would start to think that, that those would be high numbers. The, the chilling aspect of it, and it's a frustration, is Harvard Business Review has done a, their own survey and says only about 35% of the value of a strategy or an initiative is actually accomplished. So in other organizations say it's even less. So that means 65% at tops hasn't been achieved. So you can imagine how frustrating that must be to CEOs and you know managers of management of companies and company owners saying all that effort and I'm only getting roughly a third of the value out of it. And so a key contributor to that through research is basically saying that it's because the companies misalign. They're not in sync. And so I really started to look into that and became one of the most critical things that a company needs to do. So a lot of you would know of Jim Collins, the business guru and the writer and author of Good to Great. Well, when you look at his quote, he basically says, great performance is 1% vision and 99% alignment. So there's a lot there. And so I'm a stats guy as well, because you really into changing, through stats you can change theory to fact. So when I'm starting to talk about some uh, points on statistics and things like that, you'll see me, well, you might not see me, but I'll be referencing my notes because uh, I've got a great memory, but it's short, so I have to write everything in. So here's a couple of stats um, uh, about alignment. So companies that are highly aligned grow their revenue 58% faster and 72% and 72 more profitable versus companies that are misaligned. Big number. Customer retention is higher than by almost double. And the customer satisfaction is higher by three times. And employee engagement, which to me is one of the most important things, is 16 times higher in companies that are highly aligned versus the misaligned companies. And lots of times when we start to think about alignment, we think about a vertical piece. You look at the org chart and it kind of all goes down like that. You know, so it's north to south. But the reality is, it's north to south, east to west as well. You have to have everything in alignment to actually totally optimize your opportunities. 
So I explained earlier that I've got a bit of a cold, so I'm going to be sipping some water. My wife wouldn't let me bring her the real medicine, which is scotch. So we start to talk about the effects of poor alignment. When companies aren't aligned very well, you have very, very poor employee engagement. And when you have that, that means people are coming to do their jobs at best. And then you also have, you'll end up having high staff turnover. You'll end up having silo mentality. People are just going to work on their patch because that's all they really know, but they're also going to defend it. So you're going to get that all happening. And as I mentioned before, you're going to have poor execution of the initiatives that um, you want to put into place. You, you have a high chance of people working on the same things or you've got crossover which incurs unnecessary costs and waste time. You're going to have a non-performance culture or a toxic culture that can pop up. And then bad things even go worse when the customer satisfaction drops and you actually leave money on the table profit-wise. You still may make money, but you left a lot on the table. So you're, you're chewing away at your profits. So why is it that when everyone knows that organizational alignment is, makes sense, it's important, why on earth don't we pay attention to it? Why aren't we dealing with that? My whole career, we never ever looked at organizational alignment. And the primary reason is simple. There's no focus or commitment on it. No one thinks about it. So until you shine a light on it, you don't think about it. So despite its importance, it just doesn't sit on people's radars. There's no one there to check but how it's all going from uh, post to post to post. And there's not even a checkpoint or checking mechanism at the start to see who needs to all know about this stuff. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about your business. Are your strategies that you develop or your initiatives or whatever they might be, <clears throat> aligned with your, your purpose, your vision, and your values. Do you have a line of sight going directly to that, or is it just something you made up? Do all the team members, one, understand and buy into those strategies, and two, do they actually know what role they play in all this? Because they might not. They might not be able to connect the dots, and that's so imperative. Do you have the capability and capacity to be able to deliver to those strategies? So the capabilities, I, I mean, do you have the technology? Do you have the products or the services? So if you say you want to double your revenue in five years, do you have, do you have the capability to do such a thing? The other part of it is, do you have the capacity? meaning your resources may not be able to facilitate what you want to do. Both, say, from a manufacturing point of view, we want to double our output. Well, you're at 80% now or 90%, so unless you're going to sink a lot of money in and expand your factory, it ain't going to happen. And then the other part of it then becomes your people. As you start to push things down onto people, they're going, this is great, but I got my day job. And then how you pile more to actually deliver the strategies. So if you don't have capacity to do such things, then you're out of misalignment. You're trying to shove things in and it's not going to work. Are your teams performing at the highest level? So high performing teams are critical for the success of organizations as well. They've got to be in sync. They all got to be in harmony. They got to be working together really, really well. And they've also got to be working well with other teams within the organization. So manufacturing and sales, all those sorts of things, forecasting ways, all uh, uh, procurement, uh, all those elements, those teams need to be really cooking and they're working well and being in sync together. That's kind of like the east-west kind of view. So it's not north-south, it's the east-west. Even your suppliers, if you think about that, those teams, how are they dialed into what you're on to about? 
See, one of the classic ones that, that I've experienced whereby there is a manufacturing company who had their own freight trucks that would deliver to points. But once it got to the other regions, they would deliver to them secondhand delivery companies. Well, the, the customer centric ethos that the company had when they were delivering their products directly themselves was high. But they never got the third party who's going to deliver the stock to follow that same ethos. So now you have a misalignment. So those sorts of things are critical. The other part of it was is that you have the correct measuring system, <clears throat> measuring, monitoring, and feedback systems to actually get you there. You know, what are you measuring? You know, you're measuring the right things. So part of that's alignment. And is there a collaborative culture entrenched in your organization? Because invariably, it's so important for people to be collaborative to make things happen. <clears throat> Excuse me. You don't know if there's scotch in here or not, really, do you? So, so what does alignment bring? It brings clarity of the goals within our organization. So everyone knows where North is. They're all going in that direction. We get it now. <clears throat> Too many organizations are just, we don't really know what's going on over here, so we'll make it up. I'm going over here. <clears throat> Wilma's going here. Fred's going over there. Barney's over here. Benny's over here. You know, it's like, it's all over the place. Also, too, is that what does success look like? It's very important that everyone has a common view of what success looks like. And then it creates focus and discipline. That's what it can bring. We're all focused. We know and we're disciplined in getting it. It'll bring connectivity with people, which is critical, as I said, because it links departments together. So now you've got that collaboration network going because now they're starting to get alignment and because we're all going to these same things, we're trying to do the same, achieve the same goals. You're going to get complete buy-in and commitment, which then is about employee engagement. And again, employee engagement, I can't rate it. So it's so, so important. Um, you can actually get faster or get more successful transformation through high performing teams. In these times of change, you need to make sure that everyone's really humming and cooking with gas and the teams are going, so you, now you can change quicker. If you aren't aligned, you, you, lose, you lose those people or departments off the periphery because you're changing directions. I don't know if your kids have ever been ice skating, roller skating, or you know, just in a, in a playground, and you're all linked by hand and you're spinning around and around trying to go faster and flip people off the end. Well, the people in the core are all fine. They're only going a little ways around. So if you imagine a company doing that and they keep flicking and turning faster and faster and faster, people start flicking off because they're not, they can't keep up. They don't know what's going on. You're then also, you have the ability to unleash talent. So people aren't pigeonholed. They're all aligned. They see what's going on. Now they can bring their other talents to the fore. Right? Before they might be just, I'm just doing my job. I'm getting out. You don't understand all the potential I've got. Well, now you can see what talents they've got. You can start aligning their talents to actually deliver on the things. You get a great culture, positive energy, and you get improved customer experiences. Again, critical. So a little bit of a story. Picture yourself driving down a road. You're in your car and it's raining. And it's nighttime and the road's been a bit, it's a bit slick. And you've noticed over time that your car has been pulling a little bit to the right. You know, it's just been pulling. But you compensated for that by just steering a little bit left. Probably happened a lot when they were younger years when we didn't really care so much. So you're steering a little bit to the left. Suddenly the person in front of you hits the brakes and you go whoa and you start to press on your brakes. As you press on your brakes, your car is pulling to the right. And now you're really panicking and it, you really jam the brakes on and your car really goes off to the right. 
Luckily, you're able to stop, but you're on the other side of the road. And luckily, there was no other cars coming. So <clears throat> deep inside, you knew that you had a problem with your car. You knew you had something wrong. It wasn't aligned. Yet you continued on. And ignoring misalignments can bring short-term wins, like we don't have to fork out any money to fix the car. But often, <clears throat> there's a high price to pay. And these prices are paid by your people, your customers, and your bottom line. So you need to be aware. you got to get it on your radar. Because what you're aware of is what you'll see. So nobody had a Volkswagen in Canada till I bought my Volkswagen. Nobody. I never saw a Volkswagen on the road ever. Then I bought my car and I thought, shit, there's a lot of Volkswagens around here. Because I had a Volkswagen. If you have a red car, you buy a red car, all of a sudden you see lots of red cars. So it's kind of going, it's all about that focus, shining a light on what you need to achieve. And you remember I said earlier about alignment was that one of the key issues was it was not on anyone's radar, ever. So if we start to look at what some of the warning signs might be, that might alert you to there was misalignment in the, in the company. These sorts of things can pop up. There can be a bit, uh, there can be a lack of motivation or, or a buzz within your organization. And everything's kind of a little flat, mundane. We're just doing what we need to do. Uh, we're not being proactive, we're reactive. That's it. There's no clear vision or goals. That's a sitter. If you don't have them, then there's a problem. There's a little story here. It goes like this. Would you tell me, please, which way I ought to go from here? That depends a good deal on where you want to get to, said the cat. I don't care where, said Alice. Then it doesn't matter which way you go, said the cat. So Alice in Wonderland. So if you have no direction, people will make it up. They will just come in there and do what they need to do or make decisions that are going to be completely conflicting with what you think you want to do. And it's only because they don't have direction. So it's critical you have that. Another important thing is that you're going to end up with, you could end up with conflicting strategies. So, your goal is to be that, but you've got some strategies in place to get there, but you might have some that actually conflict. And you might not pick up on it. So all your strategies need to have a clear line of sight to achieving the goals that you want to achieve. Because lots of times they can start to vary off. And when they start to conflict, it all gets worse. I was with an organization, international organization, and here, and um, I was the uh, head of marketing of a particular division. And we had it was it, the product set that we had was pretty tough, you know, competition-wise, and we had the Grand Puba from Australia, uh, Australasia, come out and give a talk to all us senior managers. And it got to a point where he said, we are focused and dedicated to the customer. We have a customer-centric strategy and passion and all that. I looked at the guy next to me and I said, what the hell is that all about? We had not heard any of that in my organization. None, not a sausage, nothing. So all our strategies were around price and ultimately what we could also buy the, the machinery from the mothership it was all about price 
So completely off kilter. So we were charging down what we thought was right with our executive. It might have been a surprise to our CEO and the executive team. That would have been bad too. Or if they knew and didn't tell us, that it would be even worse. So those are the sorts of things that you can actually get happening now. You can get often too is internal friction. <clears throat> you know, again, it's about that silo mentality, lack of collaboration, politic politicking. It becomes a septic culture. Because once you start going off that bandwagon of you know getting into that poor culture, it takes a lot to bring back. You got to get the behaviors back again and get alignment on the behaviors and all that. The behaviors take time to make sure that people are in the habits. So best not to even try to get to that point. You're going to get the changing of priorities. So Liz might say this is her priority and I might say this is mine and the CEO is kind of going, what the hell, where do you get that from? You know, why do you focus on this? Well, no one told me, so I like doing this stuff, so it became a priority. Happens. Trying to do too much with too little, I talked about with the capability or capacity piece. So those are the sorts of things you recognize. And you also can get a lack of accountability because the expectations aren't clear. If I'm not really in tune with what you expect from me, then I might not be held accountable for things that are important that you think I should be doing and be being held accountable for. You get that, you easily get that. So clarity of what you expect people to produce for you within the organization. So they're clear on their roles, and they're clear as what is expected of them. And then you also get poor team performance. So people are focused, they become focused on their own personal performance and not that of the teams. Yeah. So when that happens, obviously you're not going to have a higher performing team. So hence things start to break down even more. Because teams performing at the highest level, as I said, are essential. And it's only by having the common objectives is the way you can actually make everyone move forward. So when you do have these teams that are performing at a high level, or you get an energy that's almost magical, it just makes great things happen. So everyone's just dialed in, operating as a team, all pointing in the same direction, knowing who they need to collaborate with, and they can collaborate with integrity because they're, they're trying to help the other team succeed as well. And that's a fostering of the behaviors of the organization. And it's actually quite amazing that if you don't outline the behaviors of an organization, you know, how we do things around here, it can, it, it, if you do have it, it pays dividends like the, the cows come home. So if you look at the All Blacks, they're very clear on what they want to achieve. They want to be world champions. And they'll do whatever they need to do to, to, to get there, have great coaching, have great nutritionists, doctoring, medical stuff, fitness trainers, players that can all do that. So they're all now in a line. There's also all these things about the behaviors. So the purpose of the All Blacks is to leave the jersey in a better place. So the behaviors have to align to that of all the players. And their players also have to align their behaviors to making that team world champions. So players, there's probably a lot of good players that could play for the All Blacks. But their behaviors, they don't fit. They're misaligned. So they don't play for the All Blacks. So some of the ones whose behaviors have been, I guess, a bit offside and then kept in the All Blacks, they've been pretty lucky. So the All Blacks are pretty good at coaching them and working through them. 
Uh, if you're on the fringe, you'll go. So don't underestimate the power of having your behaviors clearly outlined within your organization. And saying, this is the way we do things around here. Now you've got alignment. You can draw lines of sight to good behaviors and behaviors that might need fixing. But now you can have a conversation. Because before it's like, don't do that. Well, tell me what I did wrong. So now you can start to get alignment on that. So now you've got vision, purpose, and goals up here, strategies that are tied in. People are all understanding what the roles and responsibilities are. Now you get an alignment. That's critical. Because some of the things that you think about are when you get misalignment, there's a ripple effect. <clears throat> They're generally not one instance. So for me, for instance, I, I, I run a little bit. I have about six comebacks a year. So um, it can tell you how long I, I don't run for. So naturally, I think I'm 21, so you go out running, and next thing you know, your hamstring starts to pull a little bit. And you go, oh, damn, and then it goes. And shit, okay. So now you start to walk with a limp. And you're walking, and so I think I'll overcompensate, and I'll overcompensate on the other legs. So now you're walking, and you're walking with a limp, and now the other leg's taking more pressure. And now, now what happens is, is that my left hip starts to hurt. And I go, damn, my left hip's now going, and my right hamstring's going, my left ease is right kind of heart. And then, from the hip, it goes to the back, and then it goes, oh, geez, what the heck's going on? I'm getting, this, it's age, it's age. And then next thing you know, your neck goes up because your back's out, because your hip's out. And because your left leg's out, and then it all started with the right hand, hamstring going. So there's always a knock on effect as you start to go. So, what you think might be something small going on in the business, a misalignment, think about what it impacts going down. Here's a classic one, probably a common one, is that if you have somebody in the organization that is a good performer, but is a troublemaker, doesn't play the game by the rules, goes against all the behaviors, <clears throat> but you compensate for them. They're a top salesperson. If I got rid of them, I don't know my sales are going, but they're toxic. The ripple effect from that becomes, everybody sees that you're allowing poor behavior to occur. So why wouldn't someone else have poor behavior and then someone else? Why doesn't that go on? I learned that as by my first sales manager's job. That's exactly what happened. And ultimately, it was really hard to rein everybody in. And by the time I was able to get rid of that person who stood in front of me and said that they had sinned and you know, they'd been doing stuff, they, were tur they turned out they weren't as good as everyone thought because they had some poor things that they were also doing. However, the ripple effect throughout the, my whole group was, he's getting away with it, why can't I? Or I'll, I can do something else because there's no repercussions. So it'll, you'll pay. And it sounds like I work for a lot of poor organizations, but I've got another story about a major organization, or another one I worked for here. Australia, uh, New Zealand company, big, big organization. We were the small guys. And I had gone to Australia. I was meeting uh, one, of the, uh, one of the vice presidents or something like that. He goes, I want to learn about how slick you guys are. What makes you successful? You know, this sort of thing. You know, what's, what all goes on so we can bring it back to New Zealand? And I said, how do you work so well? And he said, we don't. The vice presidents of each division within the organization, their number one goal was to screw the other vice presidents up. Because then the light was, they either look good or the light was never shown on their performance. So imagine the ripple effect all that was going to have within their organization. The people that work for these people would be seeing all of this, the, the culture that it would be so toxic, it would be unbelievable. So there is always a ripple effect 
but how extreme it is, you don't know, unless you really think about it. So organizational alignment is such an important thing to get onto your radar. And that's what I encourage, that's what got into it, and getting other people to understand it is so mission critical from my perspective.